Uh, thanks everyone for making the time to tune into today's webinar. My name is Alex Lanigan and I'm an Enterprise Account Manager here at Feedvisor. For those joining us for the first time today, Feedvisor is an AI optimization and intelligence platform. We specialize in algorithmic repricing, advertising optimization, and data intelligence and analytics in the e-commerce space. In today's webinar, we're going to be discussing strategies and tactics for advertising on Amazon. And I'm joined this afternoon by Kiri Masters, founder and CEO of Bobsled Marketing. Bobsled's an agency that helps brands operate and grow their e-commerce business. And today, Kiri is going to be leading the conversation with her insights on how to approach advertising on Amazon. Before I hand things off, I do want to mention that there will be a brief poll at the end of the webinar and plenty of time for Q&A. So if you do have questions as we go through, please enter them into the space below and we'll do our best to get to them. So with that, I'll hand things over to Kiri. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for the introduction. It's really great to be here and uh, be supported uh, with Feedvisor along the way. Feedvisor comes out with some really great resources and content and software as well too. I uh, personally rely on a lot of the resources that they put out, including the, the great surveys, one of which we want to encourage you to participate in at the end. So um, as Alex mentioned, I'm the founder of a company called Bobsled Marketing, and we work with established consumer brands to grow and maintain their Amazon channel. And we're here today to talk about Amazon advertising, and I'd like to tell um, a little story to get us started. This is uh, the story of me back in the late 2000s trying to buy a new laptop. And the world was a little bit different back then. When I was figuring out what um, make and model to buy, I was hopping on Google and Bing and shock horror Yahoo at the time to research more about what um, type of laptop I needed and, and what were the you know good brands and the good models and things like that. When I narrowed down my options a little bit, I, I got on the phone with my brother um, who was a lot techier than me to figure out how much RAM do I need, how, you know, what kind of features should I be looking at here and really relying on um, my brother's guidance to help figure out what uh, laptop to buy. Uh, my boss had also recently bought a, a similar laptop, so I was asking her about her experience there. And then um, eventually when I figured out which laptop I wanted to buy, it was a, a, a Dell, a chunky white glossy Dell number that I, I ended up picking, hopped on Dell.com, bought that laptop and patiently waited two and a half weeks for it to arrive in the mail. And I'm telling this story just by way of comparison because today our shopper journey looks very different. To begin with, most people, um, according to this Feedvisor study that was released back in February, the majority of people actually start their search for new products on Amazon, as opposed to Google, Bing, Best Buy, Dell. Um, this is where people, Amazon, Amazon is where people go right at the beginning of their shopping journey. They're also undertaking their research and comparison on Amazon as opposed to other channels as well. So Amazon's where 79% of consumers prefer to go to read reviews before making a purchase. So if I was going to be buying a laptop today, I would more likely be going on Amazon and reading reviews from other customers than calling up my brother or asking my boss about her experience with her new laptop. And uh, also at this point in the consumer journey at the research stage, Amazon's where people prefer to do pricing comparisons as well. And then at the actual transaction stage of buying a new product, you guessed it, Amazon is where people want to buy products once they've decided what they want to buy. And 74% of people prefer to shop on Amazon once they know what they want to order. And that makes sense. Amazon has my credit card details. They have my mailing addresses. They've got one click checkout. It's so easy and my purchase is guaranteed there. And that's why we're having this conversation today. You, you're all here to learn more about Amazon advertising. You know that it's important. Maybe you need some clues on how to get started and how to grow profitably and measure results. But 
At the big end of town, 50% of advertising execs at large US retailers are planning to grow ad spend on Amazon. And this statistic is from the performance agency Nanigans, who surveyed 100 retail um, executives responsible for ad, for ad spend uh, within companies with over 50 million in annual revenue. So these people are responsible for pretty large advertising budgets and they are choosing to yank spend budget out of Google and Facebook and display advertising and reinvest that budget in Amazon. So we're seeing a big shift in um, large brands as well as startups and small companies choosing to spend money on advertising on Amazon advertising as opposed to other channels. And a big reason for that is what I just what we just talked about, um, Amazon's the preferred channel at every stage of the shopping journey from search to research and comparison through to the actual transaction. And brands are finding that having access to Amazon's power shoppers aka prime members is really effective because these um, prime members who are you know now 50 percent of us households have a prime membership they spend more money on amazon they shop there more frequently and there's a psychological luck luck in effect when you're a prime member you're paying your 120 dollars a year for prime membership i may as well make the most of it and shop on amazon before i look anywhere else so having access to these really um, generally affluent and very loyal shoppers is makes this advertising channel very effective. The other reason why Amazon advertising is effective is that <clears throat> the advertising is being run in the same platform in the same system as the sales are being reported. So with it by comparison with a Facebook or a Google, there can be a bit of leakage between you know, the pixel that's picking up the uh, actual sale on your e-commerce website and you know, attributing that back to an advertising campaign. And it gets even murkier if we're talking about display advertising, which is very difficult to translate back to actual sales. The beauty of Amazon advertising is that you can see that very clear path from customer saw an impression of your ad, they clicked on the ad, and then they added it to their cart and bought the product a week later. It's very easy to see that purchase journey and justify the ad spend. And on a similar note, the, the final reason why Amazon advertising is very attractive to brands is that Amazon is, is starting to get better at sharing data. And this is a common complaint of Amazon for a long time is that they hold so much shopper data. But that was rarely made available to sellers and advertisers. Increasingly, we're starting to see tools like brand analytics become available, um, particularly in the last six months or so. Amazon's rolled out uh, data sets that show you the demographics of your shoppers, what keywords they're using for search, and um, what percentage of shoppers have never bought from your brand before and what percentage have. So this kind of data is really compelling um, for small brands and uh, advertising uh, executives at large brands who are able to justify their spend on Amazon with this data. So let's get into the, the nuts and bolts of Amazon advertising. And so this, just a reminder, this is really a 101 of Amazon advertising. We're, we're covering off the basics here. And we're going to be talking about the two um, most popular campaign types on Amazon, and that's sponsored brands and sponsored products. We're going to get, we're going to go deep on these for the next few minutes. So sponsored brands essentially is um, to promote individual products. And sponsored brands is to showcase a collection of products or talk about your brand more holistically. And I, I think that we have a, a pretty good mix of uh, resellers and brands on the call today. So I, I want to just make it clear that sponsored brands is only available to um, to to uh, 
sellers who have enrolled in the brand registry. So you must own your own brand in order to use this ad type. There's a lot of text on this page. Don't worry, we're going to take this uh, piece by piece and talk about the differences between sponsored products and sponsored brands ad types. For now, just the general goal, like I mentioned before, for sponsored products is to promote individual products. And for sponsored brands, it's about brand and product awareness. So let's have a look at what these look like. With sponsored products, we have a couple of different destinations and placements of uh, where these ad types show up on amazon.com and where they ultimately lead. So let's have a look. On this page, what we're looking at um, is search results from a search that I did on my mobile device. And just as a reminder, about half of all web traffic to Amazon is uh, coming from mobile devices. So whenever you're analyzing your ads or your organic um, placement or you know how your products are showing up on amazon.com, always remember to also pull out your mobile device and have a look at what's showing up there because this is how a lot of people are actually um, navigating around Amazon. So the image in the middle, this is, this is my search query. I put in the search query Anchor, and Anchor is a popular electronic accessory brand. And this is what I see. I see the um, headline, this, this is the sponsored brand placement. It's where it says sponsored by Anchor, charge fast, live more. And where if I click on this placement here, it takes me to Anchor's storefront. And a storefront, if you're not familiar with these, these are really um, uh, great pages to invest in because you can merchandise your assortment, talk about your brand, even put up really nice content like videos onto your storefront page. These are available only to, um, to uh, sellers enrolled in the brand registry again. So this is, as I mentioned, this is a real brand play where Anchor is talking about their brand, that these are the products that they're promoting right now. There's a menu where I can see all the other types of products. Um, and that shows up first in the search results here. The second result when I put in the search query anchor is actually for a competitor product. This uh, placement here leads to this page for Rav Power and Rav Power's product is a is a obviously a competing product to the anchor power bank and this means that rav power has essentially paid their way to the top of the search results for a very competitive keyword and a very competitive category which is power banks and electronic accessories so this is one way that rav power you know i've i'd never heard of them I don't have any affiliation to either of these companies, but Rav Power is able to get in front of, uh, get their product in front of customers where otherwise they would have to invest um, a lot of time, money um, to actually uh, get ahead in the, the organic search results, but they're able to get into the first position through sponsored product ads. And then just looking at this, the third uh, result here, this is the first organic search result. So this is um, the first product that shows up you know, without any um, ads and that's for the Anchor Power Core 10,000. So this is where, where, where we see these product uh, ads and sponsored brand ads displayed and where they actually lead to. Having a look on desktop, this is a snapshot of part of a product detail page, part of a, uh, an ASIN or a SKU product page. And on pretty much every product page, there are a couple of different uh, galleries of sponsored products. And it says sponsored products related to this item. And this is where you can see um, products that have shown up from advertisers who are, have bid on um, either this product or this keyword or a category. So let's get into, this is 
just a summary of, of this comparison again, we've talked about placement, so where the products actually show up in search results or in, on product pages, and the destination. So with sponsored products, they only lead to a product detail page, whereas a storefront, whereas a sponsored brand placement can lead to a storefront or even a landing page of a small collection of products on, on Amazon. And the final comparison that we'll make is around targeting options. So how do you actually choose um, who you're going to display these ads to? And the main difference here is that sponsored products uh, has a few different types of targeting options, whereas sponsored brands is only driven by keywords. So these targeting options that are available to sponsored product uh, campaign types is keywords, which in this case, if we're talking about Anchor and um, these uh, uh, el electronic accessory products, I could use a keyword like external hard drive or power bank. And these keywords, because they're quite general, there's probably a lot of volume around these keywords. We've got, probably got thousands of people searching for these search terms every day. So there's a lot of volume people of people searching for these terms, but that also means that they're probably quite competitive as well. So there's Anchor, there's that, that brand that showed up before, there's Belkin, Amazon Basics. These are all brands that are gonna be competing on keywords like external hard drive more likely. Um, we can also target ads based on a product and this can be um, if you've identified ASINs or SKUs that are direct competitors to your to your product then maybe you want to be targeting those competitors directly with your ad so that your product shows up on their detail page much like we saw back here. Um, in the campaign setup uh, system on Seller Central, this is what we're looking at here. This screenshot here is taken from that setup. And you can also um, do a search. I, again, I've searched for Anchor and Amazon will tell me what are some relevant products that I could be targeting if I wanted to target by product. And then finally, we have the option of targeting our ads by category. So I'm not sure exactly which category we would be in for a, um, a power bank, but maybe through either research or, or uh, looking at my ad um, reports for a while, I find out that there's a good correlation between a shopper of power banks and someone who's looking for computer hard drive accessories, or maybe even something a little bit more random like um, cell phone cases. Maybe there's a good correlation between those two categories. So I might want to start targeting based on a complementary category to my product. Within targeting, we also have different types of um, targeting around manual or automatic. And just to, to, to pause here for a second and cover off a really basic concept of digital advertising uh, on on Amazon and Google and Facebook and all these platforms, and that is that Amazon is Amazon pay per click advertising is an auction style format, and that means that if I'm a brand selling a power bank and Alex is a brand has a brand selling a power bank. Um, then we're going to be competing against each other for this if we're looking at the same search term. So I might be willing to pay a dollar fifty for to bid on the on the search term power bank, but Alex has got deeper po uh, pockets and she's willing to pay two dollars to bid on the search term power bank. So Amazon's going to choose the highest bidder for a given keyword, and um, so that. That's how the whole system works. It's based on an auction and supply and demand. So coming back to this concept of automatic and manual, basically with manual, that's going to allow me to choose what my bid is for a certain keyword, what my budget is for a certain keyword. Um, we can also allow Amazon to set up these 
keyword targeting, set up the keyword targeting for us instead and allow Amazon to target keywords and products that they think are relevant. So with that in mind, I want to address a, a misconception that I think a lot of um, beginner advertisers have, and that is that running automatic campaigns because it's easy is 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 lazy and I should really be pushing into manual campaigns as quickly as possible. And I want to talk about this great benefit of running automatic campaigns, which is called the, the search term report. And you're able to pull a search term report for automatic campaigns that you run in Seller Central. And these reports give you really great data around what customers are searching for um, the, the search queries that they're using and how those search queries ultimately performed. So we can see on this screenshot here for some of these random search terms here, how many impressions I got, which is how many times did my ad display to customers throughout the, um, throughout the reporting period? How many clicks did I get? So if, you know, with that second result there, it got, this ad got shown to, people three times when they search for this search query, but only once did people click on that. And then we're also able to see what basically the return on investment was for each of these um, search terms. So if I'm running automatic campaigns uh, constantly and looking at this data, I'm able to then take the really good search terms, the ones that have a great conversion rate, that are performing really well, I'm then able to put those into manual campaigns where I can control the spend a little bit more, maybe boost the um, boost the budget, the daily budget of that campaign, keep it under watch a little bit more closely, and I can also use that same technique to take to put negative um, keywords in for search terms that are are duds basically. So as an agency, we are running automatic campaigns all day, every day for clients, regardless of you know, how much they're spending, how sophisticated the manual campaign strategy may be. We're still always running automatic campaigns throughout the year because search queries change, um, search behavior changes throughout the year around Prime Day and the holidays. We see different types of search terms show up and we see in these reports search queries that you would just, no matter how well you know your brand or your product, you will be surprised at what search terms people are using to find your product and which ones ultimately convert. I guarantee you that. There are some other ways to find relevant keywords and, and by now you should be able to see that keywords are really at the heart of pay-per-click advertising as a concept. It's really important to get keywords, you know, be bidding on the right keywords, monitoring them over time, making sure you're updating key, your keywords with new um, queries as they arise, taking out uh, irrelevant queries with negative um, search uh, with negative keywords. So other ways to find relevant keywords, number one, brand analytics. This is available, again, only to uh, sellers enrolled in brand registry. But this is a new tool uh, available to sellers as of earlier this year, which tell us what the most popular search terms on Amazon by department. You can also search, use search terms and enter the ASINs of products in your catalog to find out what a what a shop is actually using to to um, what queries are they using to find certain products and then the conversion rate of those products and just you know this really really rich data so I definitely encourage you to spend some time playing around with that tool and investigating what search terms are are converting there and then there are really great software tools like Feedvisor's Keyword Insights tool which take all that manual work out of researching what your what keywords your competitors are ranking for, what keywords you're currently ranking for, where are the high potential keywords. So this, you know, without software like Keyword Insights, you would be spending hours and hours and hours doing keyword research. 
um, when software is is more than capable of of doing the heavy lifting for you there. So how do you measure success with your Amazon pay-per-click advertising? I'm going to bring this back to the shopper journey that we talked about in the beginning of the, the webinar. We're really going through four different stages. One, awareness or, or, or when a customer first becomes aware of either their need or your solution um, as a brand or the solution that your product offers. And so the KPI that we would be looking for here is impressions. And again, an, an impression is um, how many instances of an ad were seen by shoppers on Amazon. So I might be running an ad for my uh, power bank and I get a thousand impressions for that ad. Looking at that number of a thousand impressions in isolation is not very helpful, but then I can compare it to, well, how many impressions am I getting if I'm using the search term external hard drive, for example. So this impressions number is, is relative. It's going to vary, you know, what your target number of impressions for a campaign is going to vary quite dramatically, but it's something that you should be tracking. At the consideration stage, this is where shoppers are doing comparisons. They're reading reviews. They're checking prices. So at this stage, we want to be looking at the number of clicks. And so a click is just counted as you know how many people out of the people who saw the impressions actually ended up clicking on an ad. The click-through rate or CTR is, is basically the number of clicks divided by the number of impressions. So again, this is a relative metric that we'll be using to compare one campaign against another. And then detailed page views, a similar kind of metric. This is just the total number of um, uh, views that your product page got for, uh, that has been uh, tied back to a customer actually seeing an advertisement. At the purchase stage, this is the one that most people are interested in. How much money did I make from my ads? So ACAS is the main KPI that we're looking at here, uh, which is advertising cost of sales. And if you're familiar with ROAS or return on ad spend, it's basically the same um, metric with a slightly different formula. So if I have an ACOS of 10%, that means that I'm spending $1 to get $10 in um, sales. Whereas if, if I looked at that as a ROAS number, it would be 10, uh, a 10 to 1 ROAS. Um, and then the other metric that we're interested in at the purchase or transaction end of the, the buyer journey is cost per click. So when I was talking about bidding previously, I was talking about, well, I would be prepared to spend $1.50 for a bid. Um, I'm not necessarily, I, I might put my maximum bid for a keyword at $1.50. That may not be what I'm actually paying at the end of the day because what I'm paying is going to be based on who, what was the second highest bid and Amazon's going to adjust what I ultimately pay down to just above what the second place bidder um, had bid for. So cost per click is not always the same as what you bid for a particular keyword and this is another sort of efficiency metric that you want to keep an eye on. And then finally, new to brand metrics. Um, this is a good good marker of how many um, how many customers bought from your brand uh, through your advertising campaign that had never bought from your brand before. And this is really helpful for you to understand like, repeat purchasing behavior, loyalty, and uh, are you looking at Amazon as a acquisition channel or simply as a distribution channel. So this is a really great new metric that just came out from Amazon that helps um, advertisers determine um, how much repeat business they're getting through the channel. And finally here, this is the, the, the golden question everyone asks, how much should I be spending on Amazon PPC? What should my ACOS be? So the, the first, Thing to think about 
with this question here is what's your objective? If I'm a if I'm a, a new brand um, in the power bank category and I'm coming in, I'm probably going to need to spend more on ads than I'm getting back in sales for at least a, a period of time because I'm coming into a very saturated category with other advertisers who are already spending a lot of money. I don't have any brand recognition. No one knows who I am. My advertising costs are probably going to be very high, but I'd be willing to put up with that because my goal as a company or as a brand is expansion and growth. There's a good likelihood that a lot of people on the call are more interested in profitable growth and you don't want to lose money on every sale. So you need to have, you know, profitability at the, at the center of how you're thinking about this. So if profitability is important to you, then this is how to think about it. This is an, just an example product where we're talking about there being about 25% of the, the the price of the product going towards Amazon fees, FBA fees, uh, referral fees, storage fees, things like that, stuff that we get charged by Amazon. Uh, we have production and logistic costs of 43%. So this would be our COGS or our cost of making that product. We have 10% costs going towards overhead. So software, bookkeeping, everything like that. Um, which leaves us with a profit margin of a, a gross profit margin of 22%. So from that 22%, you know, I could still spend 22% of the cost of that product on ads and, and break even. Um, it's not profitable, but I, I would break even. Anything under 22%, I would be profitable on that. But if I wanted to, let's say, have a 10% net profit margin, then I would need to keep my ACOS below 12%. So really, when you're thinking about how much to spend on Amazon PPC, I can't tell you, well, you should be spending 20% of your sales on Amazon PPC. It's going to vary very much by a category. Some categories like um, electronic accessories, are extremely competitive and your ACOS is probably going to be higher than in a category like business and industrial products where there's less, generally less competition um, and so your ACOS is, is going to look a little bit different there. What you should be, what you do have control over as a brand and as a company is knowing what your profit margins are and working back from there to figure out how much you can afford to spend on ads. So that, is, that wraps up the Amazon Advertising Basics um, content of, of this webinar. Just want to share with you a few more resources if you want to get deeper into this topic. Um, I write a, uh, on, on Forbes Weekly, so you can look for me there. You can subscribe to my company's blog uh, at bobsledmarketing.com. I have a, a podcast and a book on Amazon as well. And so these are ways that you can keep um, sharpening the saw, as they say, and keep learning about this topic. So with that, I'm going to hand back over to Alex to talk about the survey, the survey, and then we're going to also do Q&A. Great. Thank you, Kiri. I'm just going to share my screen here. Oop. Apologies. Great. Um, well, thanks, Kiri, for sharing your expertise in the world of Advertising 101. Uh, we do have several questions that we would like to get to as part of the Q&A, um, as well as a brief poll that you should see on your screen right about now. Um, I also want to mention that some of the data covered by Kiri at the beginning of the presentation did come from our publication around the state of the Amazon marketplace, which is available to you in the resource section of our website. 
And our ability to uh, provide this data comes directly from our seller community. So we ask that if you do have the time, if you could please fill out the 2019 seller survey via the link that you're about to see on your screen or should be seeing after that poll. Um, that would be much appreciated, and if the data itself wasn't enough incentive, uh, if you complete by the end of the day, you'll be entered to win an Apple Watch. Uh, as always, if you'd like to learn more about any of the ongoing initiatives we have here at Feedvisor, our new advertising solution, our data intelligence, uh, please do connect with us through our website. And with that, I think we should get to some of these questions. All right. So Kiri, the first question that we had um, was to do with, let me pull this up here. Bear with me a moment. Um, the first question that we had was to do with, as a vendor for sponsored products ads, can we still target specific ASINs? Yeah, so sponsored products um, is, whether you're talking about AMS, which is the platform that vendors use for advertising, or Seller Central, the features of those two of that ad type is the same across both channels. What's slightly different is the reporting, um, just the format of the reporting that you get back, but the same targeting features apply whether you're on Vendor Central or Seller Central. The next question is um, elaborating a little bit more on what the requirements to be part of the brand registry are. Yeah, that's a great question. So brand registry, I mentioned a couple of times, you get access to a lot of really great features, both to build content, run different types of ads, get access to different types of uh, analytics that you can't get if you're not in brand registry. So the requirement there is that you, um, there's, a, there's a bit of a process to submit um, evidence to Amazon basically that you own the brand that you're selling and what they generally are looking for is the trademark registration um, from the country that you're selling in. So if you're selling in the US it does need to be a US trademark registered by the US PTO um, and then you also need to submit uh, physical evidence of uh, your brand on the packaging um, so you take some photos of your product and submit that. Um, those are the two main requirements to enroll in brand registry. Wonderful. Hope that helped provide some clarity. Um, and another question that we saw was, how do you determine success of your advertising campaigns? And I think, um, you know, from a Feedvisor standpoint, this is something that as a uh, customer success manager here, I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And it really, truly depends on the different goals of your um of your advertising campaigns and what it is that you want to accomplish, right? So for some new products, um, you maybe you want to increase the impressions and get the name out there. So you're willing to spend a little bit more in order to get that awareness and that exposure. Um, whereas a more mature product, maybe you're looking to refine your ACOS, which again is your advertising cost of sales to be more in line with your break even to sort of boost your, your total sales and the overall profit that you make on those particular items. Um, so, so really in determining success of the advertising campaigns, you have to look at more than just the ACOS metric, but also, you know, the impressions, the cost per click, all those various things that Curie had spoken about earlier on um, in terms of, of identifying what successful campaigns versus unsuccessful campaigns are. Curie, do you have anything to maybe add to that? No, a hundred percent. So it, like you said, it really depends on your goals as a company. And then even at the line item level, like you said, Alex, maybe you've got some products that you're in growth mode for and you're willing to spend more in, in, in order to get market share. And then other products are cash cows and you want those to be profitable. So then you're really looking at that ACOS metric carefully. So yeah, there's, there's two, those are the two main objectives with very different strategies and different types of KPIs that you're looking for according to um, what your strategy is. Um, another question that we had was, do sponsored brand ads compete with sponsored product ads? And if not, should I run both? 
Yeah, so they, they actually show up in different places. So the sponsored brand ad shows up kind of like as a banner above search results. And that's the only place that sponsored brand product uh, placements show up. Sponsored product placements can show, show up in the search results as well, but only under the sponsored brand placement. And then they can also show up on product detail pages as well. So they don't compete with each other. They have different different sort of objectives. Sponsored brands is more about brand and product awareness and sponsored products is more bottom of the funnel, um, a, a more bottom, bottom of the funnel vehicle that you might be using to display when people are really ready to buy. So I don't view them as competing with each other at all. Perfect. Um, another question was to do with organic sales versus ad sales and how can you um, ensure that your advertising isn't necessarily cutting into your organic sales growth. And um, again, this question comes up a lot uh, with our, our sellers that do advertise. And one of the things that Feedvisor does allow you to do is show the total sales metrics over time as a trend line right up next to your ad sales. And usually we see a pretty strong correlation between the two because of course your ad sales are a subset of the total scales or excuse me, total sales for that particular item. You can get as granular as SKU level detail. And um, you know what we, we do tend to see is while yes, there is an increase in the total sales, say of 2%, sometimes the ad sales that you see the growth um, for those particular items is five, 10, 15%, um, much more than the growth that you would see from the organic side. So that's one of the ways in which you can measure um, success of your, your ad campaigns. Uh, Kiri, do you have anything, any insights maybe to add in terms of identifying organic versus ad sale growth? No, that, that's a great point. I, I think, like you said, it's really important to be using a tool like Feedvisor to actually track that over time because what what's a good percent of um, sales from advertising for you? For some other seller in a different category, they might be working off a different benchmark. So I, I would definitely recommend tracking that over time and figuring out what your ideal ratio is based on actual data. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, next question for a brand new for a brand new product launch on Amazon. Which methods do you suggest in the first stage? Giveaways, early reviewers. What are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> if we're talking about an, an open budget, I would say um, do everything that you can. Um, there's going to be you're going to attract different. Um, people through a giveaway, for example. And um, I think that the, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, Alex, as well, but I think the jury for me is out on the effectiveness of giveaways as a, as a whole um, and, and whether Amazon sort of credits uh, giveaways in the same way as they do full price organic sales and, and advertising. Yep. I would tend to agree. Um, don't have conclusive evidence of giveaways necessarily having a huge impact. Um, but you know, I think early reviewers and, and mm -hmm. getting on that early definitely does help promote it because you're pushing that sales rank up and you're pushing um, you know, the, yeah. the success of, of that particular product. Yeah, I, I love the early reviewer program. I think it's just such a no-brainer for, for anyone that's not familiar with this. For 60 bucks, you enroll a product that has less than five reviews. And then um, anyone that buys that product, Amazon will follow up with them by email and say, hey, you bought this product a couple of days ago. If you write a review, we'll give you a, a credit for $3. Or, you know, it's, it's not a huge amount, mm -hmm. but it is a bit more of an incentive for people to actually go and spend, you know, 20 seconds to write a product review. And I've found that it does definitely help to drive the the reviews in the early days. And when we're talking, that helps with advertising, to be honest, it helps with your conversion rate, click through rate, things like that, because the, um, the star rating shows up in many of these ad types. If you're running a sponsored product 
ad, it, it, it shows on that ad placement how many reviews, oh, sorry, the rating of that product as well. So your ads become a lot more effective and profitable once you actually have reviews um, of a product. So you do, it's a good question because you do need to be thinking about both of those things alongside each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it kind of relates to the next question, which was, um, when is the best time to start Amazon advertising as a new seller? Do you need to mm. wait until you get some sales and reviews? And again, you know, the, the review, having those reviews really helps you as a seller, as a reseller, gain share of the buy box, you know, strong, positive reviews and lots of reviews as a seller does mm. make you um, more attractive from a buy box perspective. And you know, as we know, in order to be eligible for, for Amazon advertising and to have your ads actually see placement, you do need to be winning the buy box at that time. So um, again, you know, the, the importance of those reviews really does start coming into um, into play there. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd add to that also um, that you start running those automatic campaigns, even if it's at a very low daily budget of, I don't know, $5 a day or even just the minimum amount that you can run simply for the outcome that you get from the search term report and the ability for you to actually collect um, data from Amazon about which search queries are working. So that once you have got a few reviews and they're good reviews and you've got a good overall product relating rating, you can translate all those really great search terms that you got through the automatic campaign into a manual campaign and start um, boosting those with more um, budget. So yep. if you're not running those automatic campaigns from the beginning, you've kind of wasted a little bit of time um, waiting around when you could be using that time to basically do research. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in thinking for, for sellers who maybe have been around the block a little bit longer and just haven't really dipped their toes yet into the advertising space, if you're looking to identify within your catalog, you know, where maybe it makes sense to start advertising, one of the things that I do recommend is looking at your sales and traffic report provided by Seller Central, and you can look at all of your different um, ASINs and determine which ones have low traffic, high conversion rates, and those ones are really primed to start playing around with the um, the advertising tool because you know the the conversions when people are coming to your listing are quite high, and so you really want to drive that traffic. And it could be a good initial start into testing out some of these different advertising techniques for someone who's who's just starting out. Okay, um, the next question, we'll answer a few more here as we do have a few more minutes. Um, do you have to have a storefront to advertise on Amazon's DSP? Uh, no, you don't need a storefront to advertise on Amazon's DSP. You don't even need to sell on Amazon to run ads on their DSP, actually. <laughs> um, I see ads for, I'm not sure if it's Geico, but for insurance companies on Amazon all the time. So just to, just to be clear, the DSP is separate to what we talked about today. Today we're talking about uh, pay-per-click advertising on Amazon. The DSP is a completely separate program and tool that's used to run ads on Amazon, um, display ads on Amazon basically, which are brand focused. You can also run those ads on sites that Amazon owns like IMDB and even other media sites like Forbes.com. Um, but that is a, it's a very different platform with very different um, outcomes really much more of a branding exercise um, so the answer to that question is no but just want to clarify for anyone who's wondering what DSP is um, that it's different to what we talked about today wonderful um, well, considering we're about at time here, I think that's all that we have time for today. Um, apologies for anyone whose questions we did not get to. Uh, please do reach out to us. We're more than happy to answer those questions outside of this webinar. Um, 
a really big thank you to Kiri for your time today. Um, we really appreciated the, the insights that you had and to have such a, a powerful expertise on the webinar um, really made an impact. So thank you. You're welcome. And thanks to everybody else listening in. Uh, we'll be sending this webinar recording via email tomorrow. Um, I hope that you did take away some valuable insights and I encourage all of you to reach out if you are interested in learning more about some of the exciting things we have going on here at Feedvisor. So with that, thanks everyone and enjoy the rest of your day.